Bible with me. We're going to be looking in the book of Jonah. The Bible has major prophets that they call major prophets because of the, um, not the work that they did, but the amount of writing that is recorded. Jonah is considered one of the minor prophets because there was not much written. But the work is powerful. Yeah. The work is powerful. Yeah. So what you, the least you do for Jesus is precious in his sight. Oh, amen. amen. I'm going to read from Jonah chapter 1, verse 3 verses, and then I'm going to read chapter 3, the first two verses. In the book of Jonah, those of you that know the work and the worth of prayer, I want you to pray for me, Amen. because we went to uh, Ohio to do a revival this uh, past week, and in there, a lady met me on a Friday night, we were leaving, my wife and I, she said, you came here about 13 years ago. She said, and I was a complete addict. And had been that way for years. She said, but when you came and preached what God told you to preach, she said, I went home that night and I prayed and asked God, God, if you can just Help me make it through this night Hallelujah. without using. She said, if you let me wake up in the morning, she said, I will not use again. And she said, God blessed her to make it through the night. And she went to sleep, and when she woke up the next morning, she said, I've never used since. That's been 13 years ago. Come on, help me praise God. There was another lady that also said similar testimony, but she hers was about six years. She said six years that I have been clean. The work and the worth of prayer. The work of prayer. You, 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 you look at these commercials on TV. The commercials that talk about is your uh, sink clogged up. Your drains all clogged up. Well, they'll tell you to use some kind of a product to clean out your pipes. And prayer is just like that. Prayer will go in and start to work away and eat away at the things that have your heart clogged up. Amen. Your spirit clogged up. Amen. Somebody's got to be praying. Amen. And somebody's got to be preaching. Amen. I'm doing the preaching and the praying, but I need somebody to pray with me. Amen. Somebody's got to pray. Amen. When you pray, and if I preach, God will get the glory. Because I can guarantee you, it's some work going on in here. I say it all the time. There are people that are here that have never stepped out on their call. A lot of these youngsters, you watch what I tell you. You watch what I tell you. I see the power of God in them. I see it in them. And I, I'm not calling them now. Don't get me wrong. I am not like some of our other brothers. Yeah. They call you to preach. Yeah. They say, I, I think God done called you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not doing that. That's right. My own dad didn't do me that way. Right. I walked into that office over there where his study was. Huh. I'm going to get the Jonah in there. Right. Right. Go ahead, preach. I came and I had wrestled my whole life yeah. with this thing called a call to oh, preach. Man. And I dealt with it privately. And I had done things to try to put it to sleep. You can use things to try to put stuff to sleep. When you've got turmoil in your life, you know, you, 
you when you're in pain and you use something for medication. And it ain't all in a bottle either. I wish I had somebody who knew what I was talking about. Listen, walked in that office, told the pastor, my dad, I said, I can't run no more. I said, Uh, 
What's that cheap wine? MG 2020? God will show up at the party. God will show up at that where a whole lot of smoke going on in the house. God can show up. You can't hide from God. I don't care where you go. You can't hide from God. You can't run away from Him. There's another thing that I learned is that you can get by, but you can't get away. Can't get away. You might as well face it. I don't care who you are. You can think that you're getting away, but you're not getting away. Right. Nobody on earth saw you. Right. But God saw you. Yeah. God saw you. No matter what you did or where you, what you tried to do, God saw you. Sometimes we do foolish things trying to escape from this pool of God. God has a hand that he will tug on your heartstrings. He will tug on your spirit. A little gently, a little gently here. A little tug there. You'll sit down sometimes and you'll be watching a game on TV or you'll be watching something else and your soul won't be content. Because you can feel a little something tugging on you and it's God talking to you. Telling you the right from the wrong. Now, one of the things that we have to understand is that God will call, pull, tug, but don't wait too late to ask for God. Sometimes people wait too late. They wait too late. They're caught in a waiting line. 